Hush now, little ones. I have a story for you. A story of dungeons. And douchebags. Long ago, a remnant of the ancient and forgotten Aboleth Empire conducted vile experiments in their underwater city, in a lake deep below the surface. The Aboleths, desperate to regain their lost dominion over the world, summoned forth a powerful demon general from the abyss, bend to their will, and enact their revenge. The demon, a Baelor named Asberethek, would not be so easily controlled. Its endless burning rage boiled the waters of the lake, taking the Aboleths with it. Now in control, Asberethek set about opening a gateway to the Abyss, so that he may regain his demonic legion and lay siege to the surface world. However, the gods had other plans. Determined to protect their creations, they sent a planetar, a powerful angelic warrior, to destroy the Baelor and send it hurtling back to the Abyss. The battle raged on for days, destroying all things in its wake. But the angel was no match for the ancient demon. Disarmed and grievously injured, the angel knew it could not defeat the Baelor in combat. In a final act of holy retribution, the angel forged seven divine seals to imprison the Baelor within the cavernous depths forever. Now, thousands of years have passed, and a band of unlikely heroes ascend the slopes of Mount Evet on a quest to rescue a stolen child. Kianan, the human wizard. Oh, 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 oh my. Lean, the halfling bard. Does anyone want to hear a song? Sybil, the dragonborn barbarian. I shall die with combat with your head on my wall! Valthiv, the lizardfolk cleric. Can't just watch me. And Fresh, the tabaxi rogue. Well, is it just me or is that one shiny squirrel? These brave few have but a humble beginning in a much larger adventure. They know not of the fate that awaits them in the Underdark. Last time on Dungeons and Douchebags, Kianan, Lean, and Fresh were able to reunite with their missing companions, Valthiv and Sybil. Together they were able to take on several of the dire, life-threatening puzzles lain in their way as they seek an exit to the hag, Toria's domain. Skill! Intellect! Math! All of their talents were put to the test, until finally they emerged beneath a large, twisted dead tree, and in the presence of Toria herself. Will our heroes be able to survive the encounter? Will their journey end here? Find out tonight on Dungeons and Douchebags, The Underdark. Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome back to Dungeons and Douchebags, the Underdark Campaign. I am your Dungeon Master, Xander. You may know me as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, otherwise known as Flowey on Men on the Internet's production of Undertale the Musical. Or you also just maybe know me from Geeks for Good, or it just as the lovely human being I am. I am joined by some lovely people tonight. Why don't they introduce themselves? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. You guys are just top tier quality professionals. Starting, I, know, right? I can't I always start with the let's let's start with the order uh, of characters from left to right on the screen. Starting with Alex. Hi, I'm Alex. You might know me. There you go. Great. <laughs> and who are you playing, Alex? Uh, I am playing Kianan, uh, the wizard who is from the Quality Control for Potion Brewing Association. Wonderful. Uprising. Okay, hi. Okay. I'm Uprising. You might know me. I play Lean. <laughs> He's a bard. <laughs> Already one minute into the stream and I want to quit. <laughs> That's how we know we're doing a good job. <laughs> uh -oh. I am Don, who you probably, I don't know. Maybe you heard of me, but I'm <laughs> I'm playing as Valtiv, the uh, lizard folk cleric who likes to steal mm -hmm. your shit. And you didn't say hi. Hi, 
Did I not say hi? You didn't say hi. How oh, dare you? Oh, you didn't say hi. You're oh, fired. I so fired. am too good for pleasantries, so <laughs> it's just waste time, you know? Wonderful, not like I'm definitely wonderful. wasting time right now. True. Um, hello, my name is Jojo. I play Sybil, the Dragonborn Barbarian, who is... <laughs> Who is currently covered in blood and butterscotch. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I like that after a day of nice murdering. Yes. <laughs> blood yeah. and butterscotch, which we have established is the great, uh, the best name for a Undertale genocide-related band. Oh, um, Jesus. <laughs> and who is this cat at the end of our, of our lineup here? Oh, my name is Phil, and this is the third session. You all know who I am. I play Good. Flesh, the, Stop. the cat. And you all love me. You all love me. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it. Well, I mean, uh, if we're if we're keeping tallies of uh, of fan art, I think yeah, I think Fresh is the most adored so far. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not. Uh, not not correct. Uh, so far, really? it has been uh, Kianan, Lean, and Fresh tied for most adored. Really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I didn't... Good to know. Everyone, I've, I think I've, has only had one. But have any of you been called a husbando? There I have. Go. Yes. I'm looking at you, Cello. That's, that's sexist. Oh, that, I don't. I don't count into that category. <laughs> <laughs> or I already have an advantage. <laughs> All righty then. Well, good to meet everybody. Uh, we are going to essentially sit here and play Dungeons and Dragons, which means we're going to be rolling dice and role playing and doing weird shit until weird shit stops happening. So. Who is this? Is the third episode, as Phil so eloquently put it, uh, of our Underdark campaign, the campaign I've written that is very, very, very based off of Toby Fox's Undertale. Uh, this is our third session. We're gonna pick up where we left off last week. And if you, if this is your first time watching the stream, and if you have, why the hell haven't you watched the first two episodes? Go back and watch them. Uh, oh. But if you're caught up, you and you watched our uh, previous last time on. I'll recap that again real quick. Uh, party is navigating the ruins of a gnomish uh, city called Spazzlefrig. Uh, they thought they had escaped, but they had emerged uh, back in the city in front of the tree layer of a mountain hag named Toria Snail Sloper and her minion, Fluis the Follower. we That's where we last left off. We left off specifically with uh, Toria, um, the mountain hag, staring at all of you, and I'll throw her picture back up on stream right now. There you go. Um, <laughs> this, I, last time I said she was like 13 feet tall. That wasn't true. She's more like 10 feet tall. Um, uh, shorty. Oh, well, that makes all the difference. Uh, thank God yeah, she's only 10. She's so much safer. She's only, only a yard feet. shorter than I previously described. She's only 10 feet tall. Um, it was this nasty, nasty looking creature with with a hunched posture and swollen but also kind of um bony looking appendages and numerous boils and warts covering her body her skin is this uh it's it's all it's like almost like a bruise blue color um okay, her well, like, teeth are yeah yes lean her calling her rude is like a little bit mean because her hair just looks so fly <laughs> yeah that hair is dope <laughs> that hair is so dope how it is balding on one side of her head um the other yes. side that deep conditioner is just working mm, excellent yeah. excellent yeah she wears uh rags that that seem to be made out of patchwork leather of a sort you're you're, you're not sure slash you don't want to think of where that leather may have come from she uh, wears an abundance of also like wilted flowers woven into her clothes. She has um, long, sharp, razor-like nails. Not that they're razor sharp, which they are, but they're also seem to be literally made out of metal. Uh, the same for her teeth as she's grinning at you with this large, malicious grin. You can see that uh, all the rows of her teeth are seem to be made out of glistening iron. And she wears various skulls. Looking around, by the way, she is currently standing in front of her lair, this massive dead uh, tree with large, thick roots that spiral out of the uh, ruins of some old gnomish building that Fluis had told you was actually the only... that's currently blocking the only uh, exit out of the city. Um, and uh, hanging from the various gnarled black branches of the tree 
are uh, dozens of gnomish skeletons, presumably the old uh, Svurfneblin residents of Spazzlefrig, who, as Fluus had explained, Toria had eaten most of them. Um, when we last left off, you were all standing in front of her, uh, Fluus by her side, and she greeted you all by saying, Oh, delicious morsels! How delicious! <laughs> and she's currently like rubbing her hands together while grinning at you all not moving just like looking at you all um with that large wide grin and she says good evening my dearie fluis just kind of like shuffles awkwardly to her side looking at the ground averting eye contact from you guys Ugh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> If if you're all just in stunned silence, yeah. uh, Torius takes like a big poof, step forward. It actually shakes the ground a little bit. She is even. I'm, by the way, I should have clarified. She's ten feet tall, hunched. So she's probably thirteen oh. foot tall, fully erect in the back, but ten right. feet tall, hunched. So it's qu- quite the imposing figure, and she just takes. A poof, couple steps towards you guys uh, she just begins looking at you guys in order she actually looks at um she like, casts her like her eyes over all of you one of them is cocked and crooked to the side and wider than the other one the other one's like more narrow and seems kind of bruised swollen and seems more in line as it kind of scans over the party as it scans past it actually goes back to you lean she looks down at you and takes another step forward uh clittering her um sharp iron nails together as she looks down at you and she says mm, you'll make a succulent order <laughs> oh jesus um, oh and then she looks at uh, she looks at um she looks at uh, uh Valfiv and sybil and she says mm, lizard tartar mm, succulent and then looks at uh, looks at Fresh and says, You, my dear, will make a lovely rug. Uh, and then and then she turns her head very slowly to look at you, Kiannon. And she says, You, on the other hand. She like gives this long slurping noise and she looks at you. You're a succulent, ripe little man, aren't you? Your Ew. bones will make an excellent toothpick after I've stripped you of all your meat. And she actually takes this, she, she takes the closest step to you, Ken, and, and just gives you a small poke on your chest. Mm. And he's in shape, too. How delicious. Oh what God. a delicious gift you have brought me, Fluis. And Fluis just kind of like shifts on the ground awkwardly. Uh, I, I um, give Fluis a hell of a side eye. <laughs> I, can I like, can I do some, um, some, some classic D&D rolls to like talk to her? Uh, you can, you, well, before you roll, you can certainly try talking to her. You can certainly start saying things. And then if rolls arise out of those saying things, we can roll. But if you want to say things, you can. She's she's not making any hostile movements towards you guys yet. She's just standing there making comments about each and every one of you. She actually, um... <laughs> she looks back over at Fresh and she says, mm, But I have to know. Is it true what they say about the nine lives? Hmm. That well, might it's make eight a- now. Ooh, how interesting. She begins, like, poking at your chest. Hmm, you're a cat. Ooh, so many nipples to choose from. (laughs) Not as many as you'd think. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Yeah, Lane, you want to try saying things for you? Um, Excuse me, I actually think that we'll be quite... Um, bad to eat because we're 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 so strong that you know it. Uh, oh, but must you make the delicious, most savory dishes, my dear? Not when they've just been running through sewage. Yeah, we Ooh, just I... sewage. We smelled quite quite bad. She actually walks up to Sybil and just runs a long palm along the side of her face to like wipe up some of the blood, butterscotch, and sewage, and just gives it a long lick. Uh, I disagree. I feel violated. 
<laughs> roll a persuasion check to just say like stop. Yeah, absolutely. You can roll a persuasion check. All right. She says, mm, "Well, I do not like my meat to be all sweaty and tired. Hmm. How about I only eat two of you? Is that fair?" Yeah, that seems fair. They what the now? Fresh. <laughs> fresh. All right, thank you for volunteering, Fresh. I, I don't actually say that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that either. I'm just taking this. <sighs> Can I roll a perception check real quick? Yeah. What are you looking for? I want to try and deceive her. Go. Yeah. All right, cool. Is that a perception? Oh, bloody hell. Whoa! Oh, oh no. Oh. My internet. Uh, that was a natural 20. So... Listen, lady, I don't think we would be the best to eat because, you see, we all have diseases. <laughs> but Thanks. Lean, she's the most diseased and Fresh has just got all kinds of fleas that are just burrowed into his skin. And, well, me, I'm, I'm just a walking staph infection. My <laughs> scales aren't actually scales. They're actually just scabs and... And I'm Everyone poison. else is just infected with worms and maggots and everything. And uh, I'm poison. I am literally sewage. poison. Yeah, he's <laughs> actually made a poison. Seen him? At, he's really badly poisoned. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think you would want to eat us. And then there was uh, silence. Uh, the DM returns. The DM just had some internet troubles. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. No worries. Um, so sorry. Uh, yes, you're old natural twenty on perception. Yes. <laughs> oh, on well, what were you looking for, Sybil? I was trying to tell her that we all were diseased. Like lean I thought you said all, like, that's not a perce that's not that's not a perception check. That's a pers that's a persuasion check. Oh, perception is looking for things. Oh, okay. So, Can I roll a yeah. persuasion? Uh, I mean, I'll let you use oh. your natural 20 on I'll let you use the natural 20. I mean, Bad. it's an auto success. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> nice. So you're trying, and she, you, you say this, and she kind of recoils for a second. Her eyes go wide. She says, "Diseased? Oh my! With what, my dears?" Well, uh, we we were just talking while uh, while the mysterious gods that govern us were away from the internet. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so so to recap, uh, Sybil, walking staff infection. Uh, I I am literally made of poison. Uh, Fresh fleas. Literally? Literally, yes. Absolutely, yes, yes. And oh, yeah, my. Fresh has just has got ticks and, 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 and fleas burrowed into his skin. And, oh, and gross. Just, and Lean really is literally gross. just a walking, um, she's basically a flea. Oh. And she's got all it, kinds of I'm just of always like, sick. I'm just always really, and, really, really and sick. diseases oh, and viruses oh, that I could kill you in an instant. No. You, you wouldn't want to eat us. That's a bad, no, bad I idea. wouldn't. I didn't want to catch any of your filthy diseases. Absolutely not. So I would no. highly recommend not eating us. Oh, my. And she just, she seems like visibly ugly distressed by this. Um, Like her face is all scrunched up and like, it's like, it's, she still has that wide kind of grin, but it's more fallen into just a grimace. Um, as she's just kind of like staring at you all in awe, like, uh, like just like as sheer horror, like, oh, oh, how terrible. I don't want to eat this filth. No, oh, I have no use for you then. Whatever shall I do? I should just be rid of your diseased selves now. Uh, oh, that sounds like a good plan. Well, I mean, if let's, let's go with that. Well, we could easily just uh go go through the exit of Smasselfrig and be out of your hair. <laughs> you think I'd let you go so easily? <laughs> oh my gosh, I think I feel a sneeze coming on. Oh uh. my goodness. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Um oh wait, sorry. Uh I mean this this doesn't change anything. I'm just saying it wasn't persuasion, it was deception, but you still rolled natural twenty, so it still applies. It was deception. I didn't mean to say persuasion. I'm um, just clarifying. But yes, right. she's yeah. she is visibly horrified right now. She kind of backs up to the door of her of the tree hut, which you can see that there's a set of like simple stone steps that lead Thank up to so uh, a pair of uh, ramshackle doors that are attached to the inside of this tree. Uh, hold um, please. Thank, thank you, thank you, Frankie Las Vegas, for the ten dollar donation. 
Oh my god, thank oh, you so much! Frankie! Nice. Thank you! Holy boy! Killed it! Great! Yeah. Great! I remember right well. when Frankie was right in the beginning of the stream and everything, so nice! Yeah, nice. Frankie! Uh, just to clarify, by the way, if when you want when you want to think about the doors to uh, Toria's hut, think of like the doors to Shrek's hut. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's those like there's like planks of like ramshackle wood that are fastened. You can kind of see that there's like a small like purplish <coughs> greenish glow emanating out from the hut itself. Um, it seems like she's hollowed out the inside of the tree and is living inside of it. Uh, in it, it, what's inside the hut, you can't tell from here. But she's kind of backed herself up to the door. She's like, "Oh, Lewis, how could you bring me such nasty, diseased creatures?" And Lewis just says, "I, they, they, they looked healthy enough to me, Toria. I, I don't know what to say." And she's like, "You'll be severely punished for this one. Get inside, you cretin!" And Lewis quickly darts inside through the doors. Now, whatever shall I do with you? Uh, you could let us go. Steve? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm cool with that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, make a persuasion check. Someone just make a persuasion check for the group. You got it, boss. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, Thank you, Lean. Sybil, yeah, I think I got this. Everyone kind of like speaks up at once, but uh, Lean, you carry being a bard, being a performer, you know how to carry your voice and uh, project. So your voice, despite being the smallest one here, actually rings out the loudest. And um, what are you trying to say to her? I think letting us go would be better. Besides, I mean, other people might be sick, and if we take care of them before they get here, that would help you not get sick, you know? Because we've been traveling through these caves, and I mean, who knows? Mm. She gives you a long stare. It's this horrifying 10-foot-tall hag creature just looking down at you. Very hard to read. And she says, No. Oh. I have no use of eating you with your diseases and such things, but very well, I'll let you go under one condition. Oh, really? And, and, sure. and, what, and what would that be? Uh, I could use some assistance around here. My little minion, the gnome, he's, well, he's amusing. But he's not very efficient at getting things done. I could use a little something, something. And then I'll be inclined to let you leave through my home. Please, come in. And she gestures into the hut. I stride in with full confidence. Wonderful. With wild abandon. All right. Great. Great. Great, awesome. <laughs> let's ch I'm... let's change the map over to Toria's hut. Woo! We're not going to use. Uh, I mean, I, we have tokens out. It's not a battle map. Can you all see this? Yeah, um, yeah, oh, yeah. Man, it's so pretty. Holy oh, shit! Oh, that's very nice. You guys, nice job, Cami. Yes, yes, Cami, our oh. artist, did a lovely job. So you guys, you guys enter the hut, um, going oh, up those so stone pretty. steps, and you can immediately see that the source of the uh, there's there's two glows emanating out from the hut. There's the uh, purplish glow Fresh. and a greenish glow. Fresh, you are currently oh, in the cauldron. Um, I'm in a bath. <laughs> <laughs> occupying, <laughs> <laughs> occupying the center of the room is like a 20 foot wide black iron cauldron. It's huge and just sits in the middle of this hollowed out tree that's full of a bubbling purplish liquid that Fresh is now apparently taking a swim in. Um, uh, littering, littering all around this room. Uh, this is almost like a hoarder's den. There are piles of junk just lying around in large heaps, uh, hanging from the ceiling of this of this uh, floor. You can see there are small cages, uh, most filled with gnome bones. Others carry small animal bones. Um, uh, to the back end of the room, back here, there is a large, uh, what looks like a uh, lounge chair assembled out of just various stones and covered with a uh with a, a blanket made out of uh something like patchwork leather that at a closer gl glance you can see oh it's made out of gnome skin you can see a couple of horrified faces stitched into the leather um oh my god it's charming terrifying 
uh, and then floating around the room that provides the greenish light. You see these like small greenish crystals that float around, and there are small little what look like fairies just trapped inside, uh, emanating a small greenish glow that just kind of levitate around the room. Over here is a set of uh, of st uh, stairs that are carved out of the tree that lead up to a second floor, um, and Toria just kind of makes her way all the way back to the the stone chair and just sits down in it and crosses her legs and she says welcome come here don't be shy uh fluish just kind of just kind of skirts to the side of the room away from you guys <laughs> and she says welcome welcome <laughs> this is my home it's a uh, it's it's very uh, very lovely looking i i admire the decor there are a lot of mm. can i put one of these fairies in my mouth <laughs> You put your mouth around it, and immediately Toria like stands. I'm just take that out of your mouth. No. Okay. <laughs> She's like staring at you, like with like wild, evil eyes. <laughs> those are mine. You will not put those in your mouths. You understand? Oh yes, yes. No putting okay. anything in my mouth here. Wonderful. Now then, let's talk business. Uh, okay, another thing deception to say yes, I won't put anything in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you no, another thing you see as she begins speaking about this. You guys, you guys take a, a glance down at the floor, and aside from the piles of junk, there are small shells cracked and broken, some whole scattered all across the ground, and some portions of the piles. Uh, without ma without needing to make any checks, you guys can recognize that these shells belong to snails. You can infer that, based on hearing her name, these are the snails that she tends to eat. Hmm. Uh, also, okay. hanging above the cauldron is a large, um, a large, uh, very expertly made robe uh, that's just plain white. Doesn't seem to have any colors to it. Just hanging up above the um, cauldron, uh, it does seem unfinished in places, but just hanging there. And she says, "As you can see, I have an." Infinity for one kind of creature. Snails. Succulent, succulent snails. I like to slurp on them and lick them and put them between my teeth. Mm. Yes, I can. I might get along. I can certainly understand. They, they make very, very delicious ingredients in potion brewing. Mm, yes, they do. And not just for potions, for meals. They are even more succulent than gnomes. Gives this long, horrifying lick of her lips. Yeah. Here's what I'll say. I'll let you all leave if you procure me one snail. Just a singular snail? Just one, just one snail? Uh, just a one. singular snail. Oh, yes, but so this snail is not just any regular snail. It is a very special snail. Oh. And what, what special what, about a snail? Know. Yes. It, well, without disclosing too much, it is, after all, just a snail. It lives in the old mines. I believe my dear minion tricked you into going into them, thinking it was some sort of escape. <laughs> no, no. I give another sure. side eye to, uh, to Fluis. <laughs> Fluis just looks back and just shrugs. <laughs> I just give like a violent barbarian glare and I like kind of growl a little bit. <laughs> he just shrugs. Um, and, and Toria says, No! This snail lives in those mines. It tends to live around the bright crystals that you've seen around the city. It's very easy to track down. It has a... Its trail is almost like glass. Very hard to miss. You should find it no problem. It's it's also... It's, uh, its shell is very bright and colorful. Very hard to miss. If you bring me this snail in its entirety, I'll let you all leave. How does that sound? Question, how big is this snail? Oh, 
Woo! Not big at all. No bigger than I am. Oh. Excellent. All right. Well then. Is it dangerous? Oh, if you, well, I guess you'll find out. <laughs> God damn it. So yeah, it's dangerous. I got it. All right. Good to know. All right. So we're in for a fun time. Oh, yes. What, what a fun, amazing time we're going to have looking for this snail. <laughs> um, hey, Keanan, make a... Actually, Keanan and Lean, make perception checks real quick. Okay. Okay. Uh, you both see this. Um, lying in one of the piles of rubble over here, uh, you see a heap of clothes uh Keanan, that you recognize um, specifically as um, quality control uh, official uniform that's draped just kind of in the back of the pile um, that seems to be wrapped around something. You can't really tell, but it is definitely the same uniform from your company. All right. And you hearken back to the skeleton you met in the, uh, in the, in the trapped puzzle rooms uh, who... Well, who was without who was who wore simple clothing but seemed to have been missing his uh official uniform right um and also the contents of his satchel were missing so you think mm, maybe something's there um and toria just says sue will you get this done i am ever so hungry sure uh, yeah sure yes actually Xander's, Xander's, Xander, yes. Xander, my, my buddy old pal. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, can I can I roll a perception check to check whether or not the uh, exit to the place is actually through this house? Sure, make a perception check. Perceive? It's it's uh yeah, make a perception check. It's hard to you, I'll I'll say that this is yeah you don't know it's hard to tell. Um, Damn it. It, it, it! If there is an exit here, the tree definitely blocks it. Um, so it's hard to say. Yeah. Toria right. takes one of her long, sharp nails and begins picking her teeth. And while she's picking her teeth, she begins speaking. She says, Sue, I would like to clarify that you need to bring the snail back to me with its shell intact and the body present, moist, and ready to go down my gullet. All right. You, you got it, you dead. lady. Pref dead. Preferably dead. Oh, dead. Dead, we can, oh, I can, we can do probably that. do that. I can do but that. Don't. Just I know that. Don't. Don't do a single thing to that shell. Or diseases or not, I'll brew you all into my next stew and feed you to Fluis. Then Fluis will get diseases. Then yeah. he'll die. Yes, but I then you won't have do. anyone to go get you stuff. <laughs> Until oh, no. the next lot of adventurers comes around. Oh, no. No. And you are no, not this much. She gestures over to like a pile of humanoid skeletons in the corner. And you are not the first to come here. So All right. she uh, stands up. I just want to say yeah. I use the I use the gesture as an excuse to actually look closer at the quality control so it doesn't look like I'm obviously distracted by it. Which gesture? Uh, so when she's pointing over to the skeleton pile, uh, with the, with mm -hmm. the quality control guy in it, I, I use that time to get a closer look so that it looks like I'm not distracted by the fact that it's the uniform. A closer look at, at the, uh, at, okay, cool. What are you gonna... Uh, no, that, that's just look? role-playing stuff. It's nothing oh, mechanical. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I thought you were, like, looking for something particular. Okay, gotcha. No. Um, yeah. It's, it is, uh, it, it, it definitely seems old and faded. Uh, so this seems like it, uh, it is threadbare as well. So it seems like that this has been around for quite some time. All right. Um, and like I said, there's it's definitely wrapped around something. What it is, you cannot tell. Um, but Toria stands up and she slowly, poof, 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 each footfall kind of shaking the tree a little bit, walks over to you, Cannon, and stretches out her long, lumpy, warded, bruise-colored hand and says, Sue, do we have a deal? Well, as my companions have been saying, yes, yes, we do. Good. Then be a good old sport and shake on it. Uh, all right. Uh, 
I I will warn you though. I I do hope that I do hope I can control this disease because I am literally poison. Remember, and I. Uh, I I think I'll be fine. I oh. have many potions that tend to poison in my heart. All right, then uh, I uh, I carefully extend the hand and shake on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, um. One second. What does her hand feel like? Oh, uh, her can her hand feels like rough, coarse, almost like stony um, flesh that, uh, but also has a thin layer of kind of like oily crustiness to it. All right. uh, she probably doesn't wash her hands regularly. Wash her oh, hands, she kids. She doesn't look like she bathes at all. Mm-hmm. And also this place reeks of death. Um, as she pulls her hand away from you, Cannon, she gives you this long look and a smile kind of like quirks up at the edge of, of her lips. And she says, all right, then. The deal is made. Bring me the snail, and you're free to go. All right, then. All right, so uh, we're, we're heading out? Yep. Guess so. Get me out of here. <laughs> All right. You guys uh, head out from the hut. And where are you guys heading? The coal mines, of course. Yeah, back to the mines. Back, back to the mines. All right. It is not that hard to find. You guys remember where the guild... It's, the entrance was the Gem Cutters Hall, so you guys make your way back, winding through the many streets of Spazzle Frigg to find your way back there. Uh, for those of you who noticed originally, it has that same effect of whenever uh, the shadows leave your periphery, they move, um, which you're now somewhat accustomed to in this city. Um, you guys make your way back to the Gem Cutters Hall. It seems undisturbed since you were last there, uh, only what seems like a, like an hour or so ago. And you guys head inside and go through the back door into that large central mining chamber where numbers of tunnels split off into the distance. All right. Radio. Oh, we uh, look for big, uh, I'm assuming big, snails, huh? Yes. With glass trails. And and it should be easy enough to find if if she was telling the truth. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I will say... I will say for uh, for those of you who want to look, make a survival check. I'm afraid. Oh, alrighty then. About me. Okay. Fresh is the only one so far who notices it. Let's see if yeah, Fresh is the only one who notices it as you all begin like looking around. Fresh, you just kind of idly just walk around, uh, around the cage, just looking around. And you see a cluster of um glowing crystals. Slightly down one of the one of the wider tunnels, you just walk up to it and just look at it, and then you look down and you realize, oh hey, the ground is really shiny, and like about like a, in this wide, almost like ten foot wide, um, just trail, just this smooth kind of glassy texture that runs along the rocks deeper down that one tunnel. That play. <clears throat> hey guys, my nipples are tingling. I think we found it. You know oh. what? Oh. I, f- I oh, found good. a glass trail. Well, all right then. What a great way to put it. Right. See, trail. <laughs> maybe I can use my uh, dancing lights as like to like reflect off of them, and then we can follow the light reflecting. The DM is going to grab a book real quick just to clarify one of the uh, things about this creature. So give me one second. Talk amongst yourselves. So, how about that local sports team? <laughs> Oh, I don't hurts. watch sports, but I like it. This trail is surprisingly slimy. You would know because Doesn't you put it in your mouth, nice. didn't you? You don't see. No, I can put a trail in my oh, mouth. So, Idiot. I, I can't have a lick it. It's very nice. <laughs> you guys are following. Yeah, so Lean, are you turning on dancing lights? Yeah. Great. That, wait, you, can you I? Activate... Yeah, it's a cantrip, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You wanted to check something. Oh, I was checking a book. This is for my own personal reference. Um, also, uh, it should be worth of noting, by the way, I will say that all of you, uh, Valthiv, I think in particular, uh, you guys should just go go up to your max hit points now. Just uh, Valthiv, you're, you're at eight. Go ahead and just go up to 22. It's fine. Okay. I, I will allow you to be, since you've leveled up, I will allow you to be at max hit points again. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Level up healing! 
Whoop, whoop. Yeah. 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 So you activate your uh, shimmering orbs of light, and they easily do reflect off of the uh, this shimmering kind of glassy residue of this creature's trail. Never seen anything like it. Like it. It's quite um, perfect, actually. It's beautifully smooth and beautifully clear. It's it's masterful in its appearance. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and and Canon, actually, as someone who is a potion brew, uh, well, involved with the Potion uh, Brewing Association, while not having to do with potions, uh, you can take a deep appreciation of the, the glassiness of this. It's almost, it rivals even the most perfect of uh, glass potion vials. Mm. It is beautiful. Very, very nice what craftsmanship. Well, although I suppose craftsmanship isn't really the right word for something that happens naturally, though. Mm -hmm. What do I? What do I have to roll to be able to smash that thing and, and create some kind of sharp daggery thing from it? Uh, uh, here, just make a make a straight strength check for me. Strength. Uh, strength uh, save. Right strength one? check. Oh, strength save, so sorry. add your strength modifier, uh, which I think that was. Oh, <laughs> That, that's oh, stealth. All. You just you, rolled stealth. You successfully oh, sorry, sneak but... up on the glass trail. <laughs> <laughs> that's the glass trail to know it is. It's fine. I'll let you use the natural 20. <laughs> Yay. Uh, use the natural 20. I'll let you use that's it. Like um, oh, it's right. It's also, it's also, and I would have let that be at an advantage anyway, because it's just a simple thing on the ground that you can just kick. And while it is a wide trail, it's very thin, and it just shatters underneath your uh, feet. You just give it a hearty stomp. Um, nothing dagger-like. You do produce several sharp shards of this glassy trail that you can harvest. You could probably stab something with, with one of them. Nothing that's, like, exactly dagger-shaped, but you could stab something with a shard if you wanted to. If you want, you can now say you've collected ten shards of snail trail. Yeet. I was just thinking, um, and this, this, actually, this is a thought for the whole thing, uh, roleplay. Mm -hmm. Guys, um... I, I've read a lot of weird books, and uh, usually things are only weak to the things that they make, or themselves, you know? That makes thinking. absolutely no sense. Why would something be weak to what it produces? That would be like, oh, I'm a scorpion, I produce poison. Oh no, there's poison in my blood, I guess I'm going to die. That doesn't make Boy, any ain't sense. Ain't you ever watched The Incredibles? Ain't what? you ever watched The Incredibles? No, I haven't. I, I was petrified during that time. <laughs> I, I was not petrified oh, during yeah. that time, so I have watched The Incredibles, but I don't <laughs> remember. Nothing that applies. What? No spoilers. <laughs> what are you? Okay, I, okay. I, out, out of roleplay, I, I mean the, the scene where that orb thing stabs itself trying to get Mr. Incredible out. Yeah, With the yeah. that, that's the whole mechanic of being able to destroy the thing at the end. Yeah, stabbing yourself also tends to end in death. Mm. Yeah. I didn't know that. I was thinking, I, I, don't, I don't know, on the off chance that this thing is made out of something that can't be stabbed by normal things, maybe its own trail can stab it. I don't know, man. I was yes. just thinking things. Then why wouldn't it be stabbing itself every time it moved? Because it's, it's a pure glass, glass trail. I had to smash it to get these things. Dummy. So, dummy. <laughs> you guys are moving down the tunnel. Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh... This, unlike the tunnel you, you had guys followed uh, to find the supposed back entrance originally, this one does have a mine cart that leads down it. One of the small my, well, mine tracks, rather, that was part of this uh, Swerf Neblin mining operation uh, that leads down into the caverns. You guys begin following down it, lean, using your lights to reflect off of the trail. Um, and it continues onward, uh, deep down. This one, this one seems to carve uh, deeper, but less winding than the original tunnel you guys followed down, like where that tunnel was like constantly taking jagged turns and spinning around, making it very confusing to determine where you guys were. This one's mostly straightforward, with only some slight curvature every hundred feet or often. Um, eventually, uh, you guys see that uh, the cavern uh, tunnel rather begins to open up a bit more and is lined with uh, those bluish glowing crystals. Uh, this seems to be a large repository of them. They are, they steadily get more and more progressively frequent as you go along in these large clusters. And let's go to the next map. This one has dynamic lighting uh, enabled. So you can only see what oh, you can see. That's pretty. Yeah. Uh, so you for can, the so viewers, can... that is nothing. Uh, the viewers should be able to see everything. I am the viewers. They cannot. Oh, no. 
Oh, Give me one, one second your... while the DM fixes that. Hold on. Un momento. Oh boy, that dynamic lighting is uh, here. Oh, sure fixed. Is great. Hold on one second. <laughs> Hold on one second. Hold on. All I gotta do is give uh, Keanan's token uh, c uh, contr uh, control by viewers. So therefore, all right, that should be fixed. All right, there we go. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Fixed. Yes. So you're in this large uh, mine town that goes downward. You can see the glassy trail here on the ground uh, against the cavern floor. If you guys would like to begin exploring downward. We. We. <laughs> Fresh oh. now. We. Fresh Slime. experience Whoa. running up and down the cavern. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun, Fresh. Everyone, guys, we yeah. need to stick together. <laughs> We're going to die. <laughs> Oh, true that. Yeah. Let's stay together. Fresh stay together for the kids. Walt, Viv, return yourself. Uh -huh. So, uh, sorry, I with, uh, uh, hold on, before I become a complete ass, can we just... Okay, Dark just... Vision 60, that means I can see 60 feet in front of me, yeah? Yes, um, just real quick, everybody... Feet. Real quick, everybody roll a perception check. All right. Yeah. Oops. Just real quick. Like okay. Yes, it did. Yep. Wait, what? Nice. Oh, my perception wow. Well. No, I think Sybil all, sees. All, all of you see this. All. It's not. It's very oh. hard to miss. At the end of this, uh, where the uh, this mine track ends in a larger open space with several crystals, you do see. A very large shelled snail creature currently uh, draping itself against some of the blue crystals and just chilling there. It seems to be the end of that glassy trail. Let me throw its picture up on the stream for everybody to see. <laughs> it is quite large. Look at that uh, beautiful. I thought it said fail snail. Oh. Wow, I can see why she I can see why she'd like the the, the shell. It's that's pretty glorious. Yes, yeah, the shell is super. Uh, it has this beautiful, multi-hued, shimmering shell. Um, she doesn't keep the shell, or she doesn't eat the shell, right? I want. I think I she want wants it. the shell. She wants the shell intact. I want to yeah. wear that shell as a hat. But does she want to keep the shell? It envelop your head. Good. <laughs> hey man, catch up. Okay. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, where's Lean? Lean is right hiding here. behind Sybil. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> I got you. Sure. So, oh. It's just chilling there. Okay, guys, what are you, what's our what's our game plan? Let's figure this out. Well, obviously, let's kill it. Kill the snail. But not she wants it intact, so let's not just smash our dead. weapons all hardy darty on it. Well, of course not. We have to go in stealthily. Just kidding. Let's let's just let's just stab it right in the in the snail guts without hurting the shell. I bet you the heart's behind the shell. We should stab the shell. I don't Fresh? think we should stab. No. We should uh, not stab the shell. Should we should? No. So, what are you guys doing? I am. Can I go ahead and just like? Wait. Quick question. Okay. Can a snail laugh? What? Fuck. Make a nature check. Is a nature check what I'd have to roll? You're to, uh... not sure. Can I do but it? you think you you're you think you're onto something. Whisper to, nature, I, I whisper to Keenan. I, I, I whisper to Keenan. Can a snail laugh? All right. Now I'm gonna make a nature check to see if I know if a snail can laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> and what was your perception check for, Fresh? Uh, mine was to see if it's got any particular weak spots. Uh, uh, it's, For example, it has, a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at it, it has these... I mean, it's largely, say for the shell, just a massive, gooey, soft snail body um, that looks easily stabbable. Um, yeah. Keanan, you, you... Snails can't speak. Um... <laughs> But you're, and they tend to not be super intelligent, but maybe they have a sense of humor. You're not sure. They can't laugh, but they can probably find things funny in their own snail way. 
Well, I mean, I'm not a snail, and I don't think snails are very smart, but they can't laugh, but maybe they can appreciate a good joke. Hmm. Hmm. DM knows what you're planning, and all I will say is, it might work. Oh, shit. <laughs> that would be funny. My plan is to make a stealth roll and try and st- snap off one of its lo- longer flails. But I think I'll wait. We're, we're doing this campaign for the entertainment of others. Why not try it? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Did it just see you? you uh, so, you guys have fun. You're going to cast, cast Tasha's Hideous uh, Laughter at it? Yep, I'm going to cast Hideous Laughter. Okay, that is a, uh, what is that, a wisdom saving throw? Saving throw for my, for my little snaily. What is the DC on that? DC. Um, say, so that means I... What's your spell save DC? Yeah. What does it have to roll to succeed? It's on your spell sheet. 13? It failed. Oh. So, it's ready to giggle. It seems to just be chilling on this crystal formation, and then you suddenly just see its head just its head just perks up. These uh, five tentacle like appendages it has also kind of lift up, and then it just begins to like shake, silently <laughs> shake, <laughs> and just its body kind of undulates a little bit. You're not oh. sure, but you think it's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is an amazing word. That is fantastic. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Oh, sorry. DM mistake. Uh, it says a creature with an intelligence score of four or less is not affected. It has an intelligence score of three. Sorry. You already you already it was... narrated it. You already narrated. <laughs> I I narrated it, but it's not. It's impossible for the snail to laugh. I'm so sorry. It does oh. perk its head. I know. I know. My apologies. I did not read that part of the spell. Um, it is impossible for it to laugh because it's not smart enough to find things funny. Um, can I try and I, cut one of its tendrils off? You can certainly run up, but I want everybody to roll initiative because now it knows everybody's there. Because oh, after that, thanks, DM. Yep. Hey, just because I narrated it doesn't mean I can't retcon it. Where's the initiative? Oh, up at the top. I, oh, all right, so, so let's right. run down the numbers here. I'm I'm just gonna keep track. I'm not gonna throw it up on screen right now. Um, so uh, twenty five to twenty initiative. Oh damn. Twenty five twenty. You uh, wanna have twenty five to twenty initiative? I I've got twenty. All right, great. Uh, twenty to fifteen. Anybody? Okay, 15 to 10. I have yep. 11. I have 14. You have 14 or 13? Oh, wait, no. Sorry, I've got 13. I've got 13. Okay, and Lee has 14. Good, good. 14. Great. And Valtif has five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. And the flail snail needs to roll. Awesome. Good. So. Uh, Cannon, you are first. The flail snail seems aware of your presence now. Uh, and let's get some combat music going. Yes. Yeah. Some combat music that won't get us copyright strikes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. Snail. Uh, I'm going to look over at Lean. I say, I don't think you can laugh. Then I'm going to tap her on the shoulder and give her some mage armor. A little bluish arcane uh, shield kind of wraps itself around Lean's body and then vanishes invisibly. You are now have mage armor. Nice. Music's a little loud. I can I can turn it down. There we go. So, yes, can is that your whole turn? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang back for right now. All right. Sweetness. Awesome. All right. All right. So Great. is that me? Uh, yeah. It's Lean's turn actually. Oh, yeah, of course, you have the 14. Yeah, fine. Yes. Okay, hold on. I'm just writing what my temporary DC is right now. Uh, it's 15. Okay. Now it's my turn. Um, now that I have a higher DC, 
a little bit more comfortable going in. So, I'm gonna, like... What are you going to do? And by the way, next up in the order is fresh, so make sure you know what you're gonna do on your turn fresh. Yeah. Just kind of partner up with... Actually, I'm not gonna... I'm gonna, like, partner up with in terms of, like, I'm gonna go into the, like, same little space mm. as Sybil, and then I'm gonna do a little bardic inspiration. I'm gonna play a little tune. For... All right, what are you gonna play? So, um, do a little reprise of the same song I did earlier for Sybil. Bless your soul. You're so good, good, good. <laughs> good, good, good. So Sybil is now inspired. That's 1d6, correct? Yeah. Yep. Great. You can apply that to any role you want, Sybil. All right, fresh. It is your turn. Righty ho. I'm gonna. Uh, um, what, what, okay, what's the actual name of this thing? I keep forgetting. The it's flail snail. Up, don't, it's a flail snail. No, 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 no. My, my sneak attack. If I vanish oh. once per turn, is that a thing I can do right now? Uh, uh, vanish once no. per turn. You, can do, you, no. you have to have either advantage on the roll, or um, yeah. have a, an, an ally who's within five feet of it. Uh, you do not have right. advantage on the roll. Right. Okay. Is there any way that I can sneak up to this thing and attempt to like latch myself onto one of his tendrils? Uh, you can certainly try. Which one do I have to do? The stealth or? Um. You, if you want to try, well, you can. You can. You can bonus action hide. So roll a stealth check as a bonus action. Stealth. There we go. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, let me see. Eight. Oh. Great. Um, and then you can try to. Uh, you can, and as your action, you can uh, attempt to grapple it by grabbing one of its ten tendrils, if you want. Yeah. How do, uh, sure. How do I do that? Oh, that's so you'll you'll run up to it and you'll you'll want to make uh, an athletics check against it. Athletics. Nice. Uh, yeah, you succeeded in that check, so you're right up next to him now. Um, and you just run up and you grab, you grab him. You reach around him, and you've grabbed one of the flails, and it immediately begins thrashing and, and like itself around. You're more grappled Ooh. onto its body and holding it in place, but you've oh. gotten one of the tentacles hold in your hand, so it's it's wrestling, but you've you've secured it in place, so it can't move. That nice. is your turn, though. Sweet, Jojo. All right. Uh, and this by is... Jojo, I mean Sybil. <laughs> All right, this is absolutely perfect. Fresh, I need you to hold him still because I'm gonna use my halberd and oh nice, nice. and i'm gonna definitely chop one hits. Of tentacles off. make sure you will run up to it first and by the way are you raging or no raging actually wait no i'm gonna just do normal all right this, so... this thing tastes weird don't don't put it in your mouth <laughs> supposed to save this for her you know so 24 definitely hits. Roll damage. You can click on, as as one of our lovely followers told us, yeah, you can click on the uh, the thing and it auto-rolls damage for you. That's pretty nifty. 1d10. So you deal 5 damage to it. Alright, cool. You run up to it and you just slice into it with a halberd. Uh, it doesn't catch one of the tentacles. It does strike right across its body, leaving a gashed wound. Nice. Uh, you did miss the tentacle, though. Dang. Yes. I just remember it is. It has to be intact, so don't cut off any of those. Oh, it, it does, doesn't it? Well, I mean, if you want to, you can. It's We'll we see. Want... Uh, well, that is Sybil's turn. It we is It is now the snail's turn. Ah. Okay, oh. so the snail recoils from the attack. Um, and it's going to do something. Um... Great. So, fresh as you're holding it there, and Sybil as you're attacking it, you suddenly hear this soft, like humming noise, as the as the shell suddenly explodes into a colorful, bright light. I need, uh, hold on, let me just double check the range on this real quick, because it is, let's see, it's, uh. Oh, this hits everyone in the room. Um, I need oh. all of you. I need all of you to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. Oh boy. Oh. oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean. Thank oh no, you don't. So much for your donation. <laughs> hey, thanks okay. for the donation, Jay. Hey, thank, thank you so much, Jay. Thanks. 
Oh, thank All you, right. Jay. All right, so um, this incredible bright flash of light, it's almost like a flashbang, shoots out from its shell. Uh, Sybil, Valfiv, you two are currently stunned by the light. It's meaning so bright. You, are, you are stunned until... Ah. Yeah. You are stunned until the light ends. So you, that which means that you, neither of you can, and your turns are essentially skipped until the light goes out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's pretty. It is. So that's going to skip Volthiv's turn. Um, and it's going to go straight back to Cannon. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'm going to make a check to see if I can figure out what the fuck that snail is that would make it do that. Make a nature check. Okay. Uh, you're, it's, it's, this is definitely some kind of magic oriented snail that, uh, has some degree of elemental power past that. You're not really sure you've never encountered anything like this before. It's uh, shell is definitely magical in nature. All right. Uh, yep. so, uh, yes. was, was that an action or do I get that another? Was a, that was a free action. You can, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, me. In that case, uh, I am going to cast Grease on the snail. What is that? Grease. Uh, as in... Oh, nice. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, it's being slow on the computer, but it... No worries. So that is... That actually summons an actual pile of Grease, like, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. I must make a dexterity saving throw or fall prone. Uh, that's a, um... Uh, okay, gotcha. So I need to make a dexterity saving throw? Yeah, uh, the DC is 14. Okay. Gotcha. DC 14. Uh, okay, and then it fails a saving throw. Um, and a pile, yep, the, the slick grease coats beneath it, and the snail, as it's kind of undulating in its attack, suddenly begins to lose its grip on the ground, and boom, falls onto its side. Is currently prone. Awesome. Oh. Uh, are you gonna move or is that your whole turn? Uh, I, I am quite comfortable where I am. <laughs> awesome. Uh, lean. Uh, okay. So I mean, I have. Uh, I think I could probably just go over there and try hit it with my quarter stuff because I think that'll keep it pretty intact. So. I'm going to mark that it's prone with a little icon. I'm just going to use the, uh, I don't know, I'll find a little signature, signature to use. I'll use this as prone. Okay, cool. So what are you doing, Lean? I'm just moving over, but because I'm slow, I can only move this far right now. Oh, okay. Is that your whole turn? Yeah, I can't really do much else. No one else really needs healing. <laughs> uh, so yet right right <laughs> already then right. fresh uh all right wait you failed your you failed your save so you are wait, done wait. no 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 fresh didn't no i didn't i got i got a natural 20 boy oh sorry sybil never mind yeah, my bad sorry yeah <laughs> Excuse my bad me. sybil involved my bad so yeah go ahead what are you gonna do <laughs> uh i'm gonna try and uh i'm still grappling onto him i assume yes this yeah, you're him. still holding yeah. on to him. Yep. Sweetness, I'm going to try and... Uh, prone, grab him behind. Though. Yeah. What was that? Uh, pl uh, fair play, I'm going to try and get behind him and uh, tie up his tendrils. So he can't oh, hit me with okay. him. Okay. Uh, do you have rope for that? But... Oh, actually, I think... I think I, I believe do, you actually. do. Great, so uh, uh, make make uh, just make it? another athletics check against him to see if you can wrangle him. Well, hold on, I don't think I do. Uh, do you have, have a rope? Do you have an explorer's pack? If you have a pack, uh, you probably have rope. Oh yeah, I have an explorer's pack. Either yeah, way, you've you got rope. This so shit tons roll, of vine that roll, roll an athletics check against athletics. it. Yes. Uh, athletics. Here we go. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah. No, it failed its check. So yeah, you while it's on the ground, you quickly run up and wrangle it and wrestle it and tying its uh, tentacles together. Uh, effectively, nice. it can still make attacks with them, but they'll all be at disadvantage. Yes, boy. All right, uh, do I still have uh, something left on my turn, or is that me done? Uh, uh, that is your turn. Unless That's you want to move. 
Um, well, I've, I've tied him up. That was my goal, so I'm going to move just a bit behind here. There we go. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, then it is the snail's turn. No, it's uh, Sybil's turn, but Sybil, it's stunned. So now it is the snail's turn. The snail is going to use half of its movement to stand up, as in, like, slowly settle itself back onto its uh, onto its slug-like body. And uh, it's going to attempt to, even despite the fact that it is um, it is wrangled, it is going to make uh, a multi-attack against Sybil. Oh, all these attacks are all these attacks are disadvantaged because it's wrangled. So, uh, what is your AC, Sybil? My AC is twelve. It's what? Twelve. All right. First attack hits. Second attack hits. Third attack hits, even with disadvantage. Wow. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, no. Fourth attack misses. And... The fifth attack misses, so it only hits you three times. So, the uh, despite its wrangled state, it is going to uh, use its flail-like tentacles to slam into you. They're going to take... Um, that's nine bludgeoning damage... Plus eight bludgeoning damage. Plus four total. Uh, so in total, that's. Uh, since since Sybil's raging, doesn't she uh, Sybil, have? Sybil said. I'm not Sib raging. I'm saying. Sybil was it. not raging. Oh, damn it, Sybil! It's a rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're taking the full brunt damage. That's uh nine plus eight plus one, so that's uh eighteen. I mean, no, sorry, nine plus eight plus four. Uh, that is uh. 22 points of damage. So you're unconscious. As Sybil is rubbing her eyes to get the the, the flash like um, thing out of its uh, vision, uh, out of her vision, uh, the snail gets itself, writes itself up into position, and just begins smacking the shit out of Sybil. Uh, in an instant, Sybil is now collapsed to the ground, unconscious. Uh, as it does that, though, uh, it, uh, it the shell's light uh, immediately goes out. So Valtiv, you can now see again. Oh, I can see. Does it like yeah. push me? Like, I oh, can see. Slam me into no, it doesn't push you. You're just unconscious. Alright, cool. Yeah. So. Okay. Is uh, it possible it is... to heal Sybil? Absolutely. Yeah, if you uh, if you want to use a spell, you can do that. Oh, I wish Law was here. To get this we could, done. We could use some salt right about now. Oh my god. Yeah, I have uh, cure wounds. I think. Oh my god. Oh, come on, that was funny. Um. I don't know how to do this. Using uh, cure wounds, so you deal. Yeah. You heal six points of health. So, uh, Sybil, you are at. You have six hit points, and you're you're lying on the ground. You're prone, but you're alive and conscious again. Great. Yes. Awesome. Do you want to move or anything, Valtiv? I believe Valtiv uh, did. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Uh, and just to clarify, Valtiv, since we did not do this before the stream, and I apologize, uh, your new you have new abilities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know and what let they me do, just, but... Yeah, no, here, I'll, they're super simple. Let me just go over those real quick. Essentially, you have um, uh, blah, 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 a um, thing called Channel Divinity, which means you're pretty Thank much able to so much use the power of your god in his cord to empower your weapon and, and empower your attacks. Um, Thank you for the donation, uh, Frankie Las Frankie. Vegas. Frankie, hey, killing it again. again. Thank Yo. you so much. So this just god means because nice. you, your your god is the patron of storms. Whenever okay. you use lightning or storm damage, your channel divinity allows you to deal maximum damage with that. Uh, so that's super right. useful if you're ever dealing lightning or thunder. Uh, but also, uh, channel divinity I itself uh, also has a quick little thing you can do. Um, it has uh, um, you can use it to. Um, Oh, yeah, that's it. And you can turn undead, but this is not an undead. And we'll go over that when there is undead. But yeah, so if any of your spells, like, I believe, like, Thunder Wave, you deal against it, it'll deal max damage to it. Okay. That being said, it is, that is your turn, though. So, yeah. Keanan. All right. Uh, I'm going to move here, 
so I can get a little bit closer to this thing. And totally. shoot Firebolt at it. Go ahead. Uh, you have disadvantage on this attack roll. All right, uh, I'm just going to roll again then. Go ahead. It misses. All right. Um, and now I have to roll a d6 for some fun effects. Um, okay, nothing. Not nah, boo. Yeah, so you um you shoot it and it just is absorbed into the shell. But nothing seems to happen. I don't think I'm going to do that, that again. <laughs> Maybe not. Mm-hmm. So that's not cool. Okay. Yep, it's Lean's turn. And over in Sybil's spot, because fun fact, I have a higher AC than Sybil right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm more tanky than you. I'm gonna just stand there, and also I have higher hit points than Sybil right now. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna try and attack. All right, go ahead. That definitely that's right. hits. I won't actually, like, destroy it physically. Um, All right. A little, a little roll. Just checking out my... Okay. Just, if you can click the word quarterstaff on your um, attack. We've discovered, thanks to one of our delightful fans, and it should auto-roll damage. Like, uh, like, on the roll, like, on the chat. Like where like your roll showed up. If you click the word quarterstaff, it really? should roll damage. Yeah. Oh my god, witchcraft. Oh. Yes. Uh, so that rolled nine bludgeoning damage. Nice. Good job. Very nice. Very very nice. Okay. It is definitely down some hit points. Great. You give it a good old smack. So. That's it. That is it. Wonderful. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, then it is uh, Fresh's turn. Quick question. Is yes. Sybil still unconscious? No, uh, Sybil is now awake with hit points, just lying on the ground. Lying on the ground. Yes. Okie dokie. Um, well, first one I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to somewhat drag uh, Sybil slightly away, like, uh, like, a, like a little Yankee push mm -hmm. down this snail trail. In hopes okay. that she flies just a teeny bit away to safety until she's conscious again. Totally. Sybil, do you resist uh... this? No, no. Okay, good. Then you don't have to roll anything. You can just drag her out of combat. How, uh, you yes. can, you can, while dragging her, you can move anywhere up to half of your movement speed. So, so if, if you're, you, you can move up to, like, if your speed's like 30, you can move up to like 15 feet away. All right, so, wait, what was my movement speed? How do I find that out? I it's on your character sheet. Yep. And because you're carrying yeah. someone, you could you can do it with half of that speed. Um, okay, so, so you can one, move her. two, three. Okay, uh, I want to move her right about here. Alrighty, you move over there. Awesome. All right, then I uh, then what I do is I charge at this good old uh, good old moving, beastie. Can well, I do moving that? her moving her was your attack. At, well, it, it was your action. So you have your yeah. bonus action. So you can't, yeah. can't make an attack this turn. So you can run oh, towards okay. it. You can get closer. Yeah, you can get closer. Uh, um, you can get closer. You can attempt to hide as a bonus action as well to see if you want to like not, not be seen by it. It's up to you. Uh, your next yeah. attack against it though will have a uh, sneak attack because Lean is right next to it. Nice. And so right, is Valtiv. Uh, yeah. And so is Valtiv. True. True. Uh, in that case, I'll try and hide behind this thingy here. Great. Uh, what do I click then to make do? That? A, then roll stealth. Roll stealth. Stealth. Should have known. Yes. Nice. Nice. Yep. Nice. Okay, cool. You duck behind it, and you're pretty certain that the uh, the snail does not sense you in battle. All right, Sybil, it's your turn. I want to go into a rage. All right, you enter a barbarian rage. All right. And I use Great Club. You're going to run up to it? Yeah. Again? So that's going to use half of your movement, but you can still reach in time. Yeah. Um, Great Club... I well, hold on. You, oh. I believe that because you're raging. Let me double check something about barbarian because you rolled an eight. I think you, you just missed. Um, your level two. Actually, okay. So here's the thing. Since you're level two, you now have an you now have an ability called reckless attack, which means you can make you can which means that you will you can make you can roll again since you missed, but you can you can roll with advantage. So you can roll one more time 
is to see if you hit it. Is that on your next turn, if the snail decides to attack you, it'll have advantage against you. Which, because it has disadvantage, means it'll just roll normally. So if you, you want, you use, can make this... Or you could use my uh, bardic inspiration that I gave you. I'll use that. I will say that that won't be enough. I will tell oh. you that. It won't be enough to hit the snail. With just bardic inspiration. Uh, oh, I, so if you want, you can you make a reckless attack. I want to make a reckless attack. So roll again with a great club. That did not hit. Damn it. Hold on, wait. Yeah, sorry. It was worth Yeah, it was worth a shot. All right, great. So, it is now the snail's turn. It is going to, uh, it's going to flail its tentacles at you, Lean. Mm-hmm. It has all these attacks at disadvantage, though. Um, and also that my... That one was a critical... That was a critical fail. Uh, um, and also your what? My, uh, my, uh, AC is 15 right now. Good, good to know. And then, uh, second attack. Misses. Sorry, what's an AC? Armor class, uh... Ah. Number you have to beat third. to hit it. Cool. Third attack hits. Fourth attack misses. And fifth attack misses. So it only hits you once. Oh, you sad. take you take only four points of bludgeoning damage as it slams its uh, tentacle into you. That is its turn, because uh, it 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 it, uh, it will not move and provoke opportunity attacks. So that means it is now Falthiv's turn. Yeah. Is there a way I can check like the shell to see if it's affected by uh, lightning or like electricity? Make a make a nature check. I'll say. Nature. Oh God. I will if I can get to it. Scroll. There we go. Nature to see. <laughs> You're not sure. Um, in your eyes, uh, uh, you know, lightning is not really good for anything on this earth, <laughs> and things hurt things. So, it's worth a shot. So, uh, I just don't want to damage the pretty shell. But anyway, uh, I want to like tear into this dude. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna like, warhammer the shit out of its, like, face. Uh, go ahead. Just roll and tech. Uh, what is that again? War. It's your warhammer. You can just click on warhammer on your there character sheet. Yes. That hits! You can click on the word warhammer and roll damage on the chat client. Four points of bludgeoning damage to it. Very nice. Good to know. Awesome. And are you gonna do anything else? Are you gonna move? Or are you gonna? Are you good? Um, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I'm good for right now. Good, good to know. Uh, it's back up to Kianan. All right, so I looked down at my hand that just shot the firebolt, saw it did absolutely nothing, and got absorbed into the shell. Thought, okay, that's not a good idea. So. No other really good options. I'm going to move up to it and try to hit it with the quarterstaff. Totally. Classic. Uh, you're not flanking from here, so just a yeah, regular roll. Uh, that misses, unfortunately. W would I even be able to make it to that square and flank? Because I don't think I could with the snail in the way. I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. It's, it's, it, it's, it, it's, I'm zooming in on the map. It seems like a wide enough space there. I'll I will allow it. All right. Yeah. It's that that part's actually technically wider. Uh, it's just I think I got the map scaling a little wrong. I don't think I scaled it to as large as it was, uh, which is fine because it was huge. Um, so I'll allow it. So okay. go ahead and roll with advantage then. So roll one more time. Woohoo! Def oh. Definitely, I'd say that. <laughs> roll damage, double it, then add modifiers. All righty. Uh. I, it automatically did a, a double damage thing, or I no, it didn't. Sorry, that it's using Wizards of the Coast rules, which I disagree with, uh, because essentially their crit rules is you can roll another die. I say double it. So 
if it it rolled a one d six, so multi. Uh, so technically, you only do three damage if it's if you rolled a one, double that to two, added one, or what? I'm confused. Sorry. Hold on. Uh. How how about just how about this? Just re-roll the damage dice. Re-roll the damage dice because it's. I'm confused with the system. Go ahead and re-roll. Uh, okay. no, Cannon's uh, attack bonus is plus one. It's and... minus one. <laughs> oh. So like, like I said, I'm confused. So instead of great. So you'll um so you, you rolled a th- three originally, then you'll double that six minus one five, so you deal five points of damage to it. Alright. Cool. Good to know. So that's the exact same result as if I had kept the, the last one. <laughs> yes. Just wanted to clarify. Alright, great. It is now Lean's turn. Oh. Okay, I'm just gonna do the same thing I did last time because you know, whatever. Totally, and you have advantage because Keanan is flanking it. Hey. Uh, you rolled three attacks there. Okay, well, two of them were the same, so whatever. So, therefore, they miss. Um, great. That's your attack. You gonna do, do you have any bonus actions? It seems like not, uh... Uh, Sybil, are you feeling okay? Yeah. I'm very, 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 very angry. <laughs> But like, okay, like, yeah, like in a modest, yeah, I'm okay. Or like, yeah, like, you know, like my arm's falling off. I could use some healing. Uh, should I ask for healing? Do I have good enough help to... It's up to you. Yeah. If it's up to you, it's up to you. I... I think I'll be fine. Okay. I can handle it. Great. Is Then that's your whole turn, Lane? Yep, yeah, I'm good. Fresh, it is your turn. Righty ho. Um, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make, 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 make myself a sneak attack. I think. Go ahead. Run out of this thing. Uh, what do I? Is stealth, yeah. Uh, no, you don't need to roll stealth because yeah. you're already hidden from it. Uh, all right, what are you attacking oh, yeah. it with? Uh, my rapier. Yeah, then you'll have to run up and get close to it, but you are currently already hidden from it, so it will count as a sneak attack. Cool. So. You'll have to run up to it. But yeah, so go ahead and roll with advantage Ooh. against it. Uh, how do I roll with advantage? Um, just roll twice. Is that what I meant? Yeah. Is that what I was yeah. You to definitely hit it. So go ahead and roll your damage and then add an extra d6 thank for sneak attack. Thank you so much for your donation. Oh my god, thank you again, Frankie Las Vegas. Dude, how much has he donated so far? Thank you. How much? Oh, how much money are you? Do you even have? Are, are you going to be okay? So that's twenty-five. That's twenty-five I mean, pounds in total. Twenty-five okay. total. Wow! Awesome. Good job. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much. D six. I'm rolling. Yes. Yeah, roll an extra D six. Great. Ooh. So that's fifteen points of damage total. Uh, you rush up there and you slash it with your rapier. You actually cut off one of its tentacles. So now it only has four. Nice. Yes. Uh, and a bonus Fresh. action, can I just go and hide again? Yeah, make it stealth check. Yeet. Sorry, you were saying, before I hide, what were you going to say? What did I say about cutting off the tendrils? Yeah, they're fine. They're no, not the- anyway, though. Alrighty, that is... Uh, roll, roll, roll your stealth check. Yeah, so I was just finding it. Alright, you... Yeah. Yep, and you just... I assume you'd dive back there. Yeet. Yep, doesn't seem to notice you. Alrighty. Uh, it is Sybil, it's your turn. This thing is starting to look a little rage, rough. Right? Yes, you are still in a rage. I want to use my lightning breath. Okay. You sure about that? Yeah, I'll yes. make it really crispy. Alright, go, I mean, go actually, ahead. Actually, that's a horrible idea. Lean is right. I want it gonna... moist. I will, okay. Here, if you, want, if you want my DM ruling on this, your attacks won't ruin its body. And you can't damage the shell. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. It's just a matter of killing it. We're fine. So you can do so that I'm, attack. I will. I will tell you as the DM. In this case, you're you're not at risk of damaging its body. It won't make it not moist anymore. <laughs> you don't know, but it DM will tell you you're fine. If you want to make that attack, you absolutely can. 
I'm gonna save it and could, use my Okay. Can I just say, uh, according to the chat, the first $10 donation that was uh, anonymous was also Frankie, so thank you again, Frankie. Oh my gosh. Frankie, you beautiful human God Frankie. damn, Frankie. Nice. You're beautiful, you. beautiful dude. <laughs> you rolled a 20. You rolled a 20. That hits. Roll your damage. <laughs> Eight. Uh, because you're raging, you add two to it. So you <laughs> deal 10 points of damage. Cool. And you cut off one of its other tentacles. Yeah! Uh, the snail looks extremely rough right now. And it is going to... It is uh, its turn. Uh, you see that the snail is going to recede into its shell as its action. Oh, no, Someone no. grab the tendril and drag it back out. Yeah. Alright, so that is its turn. Now it's Valthiv's turn. I, again, like the, D, the DM will specify if you make attacks against the snail, you will not destroy the shell. It's just that it is now protected by, by the shell. But you can still attack it from here. You won't damage the quality of the shell if you attack it. So feel free to attack if you want. But it is now currently curled up inside of its own shell. Alright. Well, might as well make it incredibly uncomfortable um, while doing that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, like, I'm gonna go over here really quick. It's not fresh. <laughs> um, it gets, um... It does get an opportunity attack uh, against you. Only just one. At disadvantage, because you pass by. Like, one of its flails, uh, tentacles, just, like, whips out and tries to hit you as you pass by. Uh, at disadvantage. It def- well, What's your AC? Ten. Oh yeah, it hits. You take you take uh, seven points of damage as you run by, and it whips you. What? All Hold right. on a second, though. Yeah. Don't, Valtif, don't you have like chainmail or some kind of armor? Um, do I? You yeah, should. You, you should. Yeah, you have chainmail. Yeah, chainmail. Yeah. Oh, then your AC should be not that. I your mean, AC that's... should be what it is when we made the sheet, so... Yeah, the 10 is the default, plus armor it would be, like, 18. Okay, it says 18 now. Okay, I'm gonna double check. Well, because when I looked at it, you're, you're... Okay, hold on. You're wearing... What is your armor? Are you wearing, like, a chain mail or chain shirt? What are you wearing? Uh, according to the inventory, chain, chain mail, mail and yeah. a shield. Chain mail. And a shield. Oh, so that's a plus two. Uh, let me just double check the chain mail real quick. Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, so you're at 18. Wow, nice. So yeah, no, then it misses, and you don't take damage at all. So what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna do more of, like, a elemental attack, uh, for, uh, Guiding Bolt. Okay. Where'd it go? There it is. Curses! Alright, you shoot the Guiding Bolt at it. And its shell absorbs it. I need to make. I need to make a roll to see if anything. <gasps> yay! Something happens. Oh, like uh, um, a yay. I something need... happens or oh, something happens. Oh, it's yay for oh. the DM, but oh for you guys. Um, oh, oh yeah, this is gonna hit all of you. I need all of you to make a const. Oh wait, yeah, a Constitution saving throw. God. <laughs> nice. Good, I'm yes. dead. <laughs> God, y'all even lean behind in the dirt. <laughs> Farewell, my short friend. <laughs> it was good knowing. <laughs> Bye, tiny. Uh, let's see. Uh, th that's you said that's guiding bolt. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a first level spell, right? Yes. All right, cool. Lean, you take. Lean, you take five points of uh, force damage as the uh, creature absorbs Vault of Spell and then erupts it out of its shell in this okay. wide burst. You take five points of damage. Everybody else takes two points of damage from okay. it. Okay. Yep. But that is uh, your turn, Vault of. Kianan. Uh, I shout, don't hit this with magic! And then I just start whacking on the shell, trying to make a lot of noise inside the shell so it gets annoyed into going back out. <laughs> you, want, you want to make... Okay, make an attack against it. Tell me what to do. I'm your real dad. All right. Go ahead, make an attack. Da, 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 quarter staff. Here we go. 
Uh, with advantage, because you're flanking With advantage, it. yes. Yeah. Uh, neither attack hits. You just whack it against the shell. Doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, lean. <sighs> well, I mean, I really only see one thing to do. So... I mean, I could heal myself. Yeah, I could do that. That's my bonus action. I'll just attack it. And you have advantage. I, I remembered that. Mm -hmm. uh, you miss. Neither attack hits. You're just whacking against its shell to no effect. And you wait, I'm gonna... Yep, I'm just gonna oh. do that. I'm just gonna... <laughs> Me. Uh, cure wounds is an action, though. Well, I have another one. Wait. Yeah, yeah I think you're thinking of the other spell. That is a bonus action. Yeah. Yeah. It's so one of go. them that I saw. Yep. So that's 1d4 plus whatever your spellcasting modifier is. So you can go ahead and roll that and heal yourself. Uh, it's Fresh's turn. Yeet. All right. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. I want to make another stealth, uh, another, what you would call it, a sneak attack. I'm going to run up to the thing, uh, use oh, my rapier. You just rolled damage. You just rolled, no, that was, nope. sorry, that was lean, sorry. Like, yeah, that was lean's healing. Uh, yeah, go ahead and make an attack with advantage against it. Attack with advantage. Uh, it's blanking. Uh, so roll uh, again. Press it again. Yeah. There we go. Plan is to stick this both, rapier right Both up. miss. Both miss. Oh, what? Yeah, it. it's you're you're just slamming into its shell. It's very solid protective shell to no effect. Fuck. Well, I've got one more bonus action, don't I? Yep. Uh, you can like dash, disengage, or hide. <coughs> dash, disengage, or hide. What dash do? Uh, you can move uh, twice your speed in any way direction. It's like sprinting. Okay. Uh, that could just like go right here. All right. Cool. Good, good, good. Yeah. So, good it is good now... Protects. Sybil, it is your turn. I would like to roll a perception check to see if there's any way I can shove my javelin into the shell and stab the flesh of the snail. You do not want to I do just, that. You can certainly try, so roll an attack with advantage, because, uh, uh... I mean, if you move slightly to the right... Uh, actually, no, if you move right here you'll get the flanking bonus like right sorry right here which you can you can do that easily you can move there on your turn um where did uh there was no ping on my end me neither i didn't see really any. yeah hold on right no. here right there didn't see that okay well i'll move you if you moved right here you can get an advantage or, or you, you can get advantage there, or you can make your attack reckless. It's up to you. Um, one one or two ways to get advantage. Oh. Hold on. My uh, my internet just said, like, my connection yeah. to the server was... Yeah, uh, Rule 20 yeah. just disconnected everyone for a second. Yeah, me too. So, really? All, the, thing, thing, looks like, wow. all the things like just suddenly now. happened. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. Can you Can you please repeat what... Like where I could put myself. Yeah, if you want to get the flanking bonus uh, for advantage, you can move there. Otherwise, you can make this attack reckless and make an advantage without moving. I'll move right there. And, All right, uh, so roll one more time. Both attacks miss. It is very hard to hit. Yeah, it is. It's the snail's turn, and it's going to remain in its shell, all safe and warm from the world. <laughs> Balthiv! All right. Uh, is it possible to like run and like grab one of like the chopped off like flails and hit it with it? Sure, that'll count as an improvised weapon. Uh, but you can most definitely try that. All right. What do I need to do for that? Uh, you. I'm gonna say make this as a, a strength check again. Like, so just roll strength and then add. Oh, sorry. Yeah, roll d20 and add your strength with advantage because flanking. Uh, plus so roll, well, yeah, so oh. roll d20 twice. Okay. 
Whoops. Yeah. Okay, so roll one more time. Uh, that just barely misses. Ugh. Just barely. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, it's AC of it's AC is high when it's in its shell, man. You you do it. You do effectively have one of its cut off tentacles, and you just slam it into it to seemingly no effect. Cannon. All right. Uh. I am going to move over here so that uh, none of my allies are caught in the cone. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cast Sleep on it. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So Sleep has basically Um, no saving throw and no attack roll. So if its HP is under that, it's unconscious. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly the snail just seems to go limp. And it slowly draws out of its shell as it is now unconscious and asleep. Awesome. Well, that works. I was going to try something, but I like that one better. So it's Lean's turn. Kill it. And it's sleeping. I'll just try and hit it. All right. So yeah, roll. I'll say with advantage because it's, you know, prone and asleep. Um... Yeah, roll with advantage. It definitely hits. So roll damage. Seven points of piercing da- uh, of bludgeoning damage. Great. So as Cannon casts a spell, it's, the snail goes limp and just slowly emerges from its shell. And you just lift your corset high above your head and slam it down onto the snail's body. You hear a loud <laughs> squish noise as it kills the snail. Ooh, I killed it! Nice! It had two, it had two hit points left. <laughs> Good job, Lean. And it took you guys nice. a whole turn to hit it. <laughs> Flail nice. snails, man. Yeah. Flail snails, it's man. Just, it's it's a slippery fucker, that's for sure. Yep. It is I was so now tempted to just climb into the snail dead. shell. <laughs> D-E-D. Alright, how are we gonna drag this thing back? Uh, uh Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! I'm gonna try to. Push Can we it. just like forcefully shove it back in the sne- the shell and roll it? You, if you want, you can certainly try. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think that would probably happen. damage it. You just wanna uh, try and stuff it back into its shell. <laughs> <laughs> like we damage the shell, shell if we like roll it, you know? Its shell is super tough looking. And you feel it, you could success. You could roll it. Oh, we killed it. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, cool. What do, I, what do I need to roll to shove this thing back into its shell? Make a just make a make a strength check. <laughs> strength. Just a straight just strength back in check. There. Just straight strength check. Oh, yeah, no, you oh just my God. with a hearty <laughs> push and almost like a almost like a mnemonic suction noise, just like a funk. It just goes back into its shell. Oh, fantastic! Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. All right. You, guys want to Lee, you want to roll this thing? I will assist. Yeah. All righty. So we would be, like, pushing this thing along. Mage hand be a good thing to roll this thing with. Yeah, mage hand can only weigh 10 pounds, so probably yeah. not. No, oh, this thing is definitely no. heavier than that. So, uh, no I check required. If you... Well, what's, what's up, Sybil? I'm sorry to interrupt, but can I roll no, a strength worries. check? Can I roll For a strength what? check to try and help push it? I will say that because all of you are wor- I will say that because all of you are working together, you don't need to make a check because you all Excellent. can just collectively. Yes. So, uh, with your trophy, your prize now secured, you guys begin rolling it back up to the um, to the layer of Toria, and that is where we'll leave off today. It's a short session to- session today. The DM has other places to be. That's where we'll yeah. pick up next Friday. Woo! Same place. He doesn't love us enough. Time. Same place, different time. Uh, we'll stream. We'll be streaming next Friday, same time at seven CST. So tune in, and this will be going up on Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, yeah. yeah. See and you guys you next week. Donated. Yeah. Thank yes. You. Thank yeah. you so Thanks. much. Thank you, thank you guys. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. Definitely well. you, Frankie. All this said and <laughs> yeah, done. Frankie. Thank you, Frankie. See you guys later. Thank yeah. you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.